Are you serious about learning Blender? Hi guys, I'm Alex, lead instructor at Blender Academy. And over the past 15 years, I've taught thousands of creative professionals like you the fundamentals of 3D modeling at big animation companies, film industry unions, and more. And although Blender is a beast of a program to learn, with the right approach, it doesn't have to be as difficult as people make it out to be. That's why we started Blender Academy, a resource to help people invest their time wisely, build the Blender skills they need, and then go out and get the jobs they want. And since we're a new channel, we've decided to do something a little unconventional. For a limited time, we're gonna make our first course, The Complete Intro to Blender, available for free here on YouTube. We encourage you to follow along, learn a bunch, and if you think we can help you reach your goals, head over to our website and try all of our courses for free. Thanks for watching, and here's the first lesson of our Complete Intro to Blender course. Download, install, and tour Blender. In this lesson, let's get you set up by downloading and installing Blender, opening it for the first time, and getting a brief understanding of the user interface. So to begin with, open up a web browser. I have Chrome open here. Type in blender.org and hit enter, and you'll be directed to the Blender homepage. Now, the version of Blender you download might be different than mine, depending on when you're watching this course. But this course will always remain up to date. So even if there's a slightly newer version of Blender, you'll be able to download it, install it, and still follow along with this course just fine. So you click the Download Blender button, and you'll see that it detects whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, and it will default to wanting to download whatever system you're downloading it to. So you can run Blender whether you're running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. I'll be using Windows or a PC for this particular set of courses, but I also use Blender on my Mac. So I'll be able to talk about the differences between the two. And there's really not much of a difference other than a few things that you might be used to about accessing your files on your Mac. So once you click the download button, it will begin downloading it to wherever your downloads go on your computer. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, it'll take a few seconds to a few minutes to download. And then wherever this file is on your computer, you can go ahead and click on either the icon down here like I did, or you can go find the installer and you can run the installer here. You'll just be guided through a series of prompts and ultimately you'll be installing the software. Now I already have Blender installed, so I'm gonna cancel mine, but you go ahead and follow through with yours. And then after you're done installing Blender, you should have the Blender application somewhere on your computer. You can double click to launch it. And I've already launched my copy of Blender and you should see Blender open with some sort of welcome screen by default. Again, your welcome screen might be slightly different than mine depending on which version of Blender you've downloaded. And while there's a few things you can configure right out of the gate, you won't need to do this right now. We can always go back and configure things later if we'd like to. So just click once anywhere in this broader area and that little welcome message goes away. Okay, now that you've got Blender open, you can look around and see that there's a whole lot of stuff going on and it can be a little bit confusing and very overwhelming at first. But as we'll see in just a moment, we can ignore 90% of what we see here on the screen and we can just focus in on the very, very fundamentals while we're new to Blender. And then slowly but surely, we'll layer in to talk about what each and every part of Blender is and does. So don't get overwhelmed. Let's just quickly cover a few key things that you will need to focus on. So I'm gonna take just about a 60 second tour. I'm not going to cover each and every icon and menu item here, just about 60 seconds to give us a brief orientation of what we're looking at. So first, across the top left here, there are these five words here. This is the main menu. We'll go here every once in a while, but it's not a major point of focus. The second thing you need to know is that everything you see in Blender is an editor type. So what I mean by that is this big, if you look at this big outline here, there's these little rounded corners here, 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 and here. This big window here, this is a editor type. Then down on the bottom here, this little thing here, this little strip is another editor type. Then we have a box over here that is an editor type. And then a fourth one here is this whole area is an editor type. We'll talk about what each editor type is. So this is a 3D model viewport. This over here is an outliner and so on. We'll talk about these in a moment, 
But really what we have in Blender always are these panels or these windows, which are known as editor types. And then within them, there may be menus, icons, tools, and other things. So we have four of these editor types here. Now, across the top middle section here, all of these words, these are tabs, and these are different workspaces. By default, you are seeing the layout workspace. Click on the modeling tab, and you switch to the modeling workspace, and your editor types change a little bit. So notice you still have these three, but you lost the bottom one, and the size of these kind of got adjusted. Click on the sculpting tab, and you notice now that this editor type looks a little different on the left, and the things across the side, it may not seem obvious, but they're the same, and so on. If you click on each different tab, now we see two editor types here, plus these two, and so all these workspace tabs are just reconfiguring the editor types that you see. There's no need to worry about all of these features and different workspaces just yet. For now, go back and click on the Layout tab. So this is the Layout workspace. And by default, it is showing us four different editor types. Again, we don't even need to know exactly what these editor types are just yet. We just need to know that they're going to change depending on what we're doing in Blender. Now, when you're new to Blender, as I said, while you can ignore most of what you see in all of these editor types, let's just quickly give them their names. So the bottom is the timeline editor. You will not need to use that at all. You can completely ignore it for now. To the upper right is the outliner editor. And while we will cover that a little bit down the road, it'll be a while before you have to pay attention to it. So for now, just pretend it's not there. And then over here to the right, you have the properties editor. There will be an occasion here and there where we'll look at something very quickly over there, but most of it, 95% of it, we don't care about yet either. Which leaves us with the 3D viewport editor. That's the big window here. And that's where we'll be focused. But even within this viewport, most of the tools and menu options and icons here won't be things that we're focused on in the very earliest stages. So we'll be able to ignore much of what's in here for the next several lessons, and then slowly but surely, we'll uncover the things that matter when you actually need to know about them. So let's not worry about defining any of that stuff just yet. Now, I already mentioned this at the start, but Blender works on a Mac, PC, or Linux. I happen to be on a PC here, but Blender's interface should look pretty much the same no matter where you're using it. So you should be able to follow along pretty easily. Now, when learning Blender, it's very important to learn the keyboard shortcuts or what are also known as hotkeys. So ideally, you'd have a full keyboard like I have here on my PC. You can't see it, but I'll be calling out keys on this full keyboard, including the number pad that's over on the right hand side. If you don't have a number pad and you don't have a keyboard that you can connect to your laptop, let's say, that has a full keyboard, don't worry. You'll be able to still use the same commands. You might just have a slightly different keyboard shortcut, or you may have to click on the actual menu or tool icon, and we'll cover that later. But whether you're on a PC or a Mac, really, when it comes to the hotkeys, it's just about the size of keyboard you have and whether you have the full complement of keys, or maybe you have a more compact keyboard that loses a few of the extra keys that you don't normally need, and we'll cover that as we go along in the lessons. Also, you'll wanna make sure you have a three button scroll wheel mouse. So I've got a very simple, very cheap three button scroll wheel mouse that I'm gonna use here. And it'll be very helpful for most of what we do in Blender to have one. If for any reason you wanna use your trackpad, whether you wanna use it throughout the entire course, or maybe you're just traveling, you don't have your mouse and you need to be able to use your trackpad from time to time, you will be able to have a certain function turned on in Blender that will help you emulate a three button mouse. And if that's something you wanna do, we'll talk about that in a future lesson. But for now, if you can, please get a three button mouse. It'll make learning Blender so much easier. Now, the last thing is for many people, the thing that they're going to do in Blender down the road might be something where a drawing tablet, like a Wacom tablet would be very handy to have. So whether you're going to sculpt or texture paint or do some 2D drawing all within Blender, you can have a drawing tablet. For this intro to Blender course, I will not be using a drawing tablet. 
It's okay to have one if you've already got one. You can go ahead and use it, but it's not necessary. And having a drawing tablet doesn't replace having that three button scroll wheel mouse. It just complements what you're trying to do for certain types of work. So any drawing tablet will do. If you already have one, it'll probably work just fine, but we won't need it for this particular course. The last thing I'll mention is there are dozens of ways to do things in Blender. So sometimes there's a tool icon, sometimes there'll be a menu item or a hotkey, and that might mean that we could select things using a hotkey or a menu item or a tool icon, or there might be a totally different set of tools or menus or icons that could get us to the same result. My job here is not to give you the 20 ways to do something in Blender. I'm gonna show you each time one specific way that I would go about it. If you find that other tutorials or from previous knowledge that you prefer to use a different tool or a different keyboard shortcut, you're welcome to do that. I'm gonna make sure that we get straight to the point so I can take advantage of not taking all of your time up for 20 different ways to do something, but I'll always try to curate it down to what I think is a reasonable or maybe even the best way, or at least the way that I would prefer to do that particular thing. Okay, so all of that introduction out of the way, we've got Blender installed, we've got it open, we understand the very basics about the user interface. So now we're ready to get into the next lesson where we'll talk about how to navigate. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Thank <laughs> you.